Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Learn Lightroom CC, also known as Lightroom in the Cloud. In this, the first episode of this video series, I just want to talk about what exactly Lightroom CC is and how it's different than Lightroom Classic CC and some of the functions of Lightroom CC. Now, first of all, if you're looking for Lightroom Classic CC, that is the Lightroom that has been around for a little over 10 years. That's not what Lightroom CC is. Adobe could have done a better job of naming their programs because it's very confusing. Lightroom CC which is what this video series is about, is the Lightroom that was introduced in October of 2017. You can see it even has a very similar logo to Lightroom Classic CC. The main difference, of course, is the color is slightly different and we have these rounded corners. Now, beyond that, there's a lot of difference. Lightroom CC is also called Lightroom in the Cloud, meaning with Lightroom Classic CC, you need somewhere locally to store your images. If they're not on the local hard drive of your computer, you'll have an external hard drive with all your images on there. And then you process your images uh, through the program Lightroom Classic CC, previously called Lightroom 6 and Lightroom 5, 4, and so on. Now, the thing that Lightroom CC does is your images are stored in the cloud and when you subscribe to the Creative Cloud package from Adobe you'll get a certain amount of space in the cloud to store your images. Um, if you have the photography membership which most of the people that do watch my videos have you'll have 20 gigabytes of cloud storage so you could store as many images as you can that will fit up to that 20 gigabyte limit. If you have a full Creative Cloud membership where you're subscribing to all the apps, like some of us do, you'll get 100 gigabytes of cloud storage. Now, if you just have the trial version, you're trying out the software, they'll give you 2 gigabytes of cloud storage. You can upgrade the cloud storage if you sign, uh, find you're filling it up. It's essentially around $10 per terabyte, approximately. Uh, so uh, if you find you have, let's say, the full membership and you're, you filled up your 100 gigabyte quota, you could upgrade for around a little over $10, I think it is, and get a terabyte. Then you fill that up and then another 10 bucks will get you another terabyte. Really, Lightroom CC isn't for the busy professional photographer. That's my opinion. If you're um, a busy photographer, let's say you do a one wedding a week and you do a bunch of portrait sessions throughout the week, you'll fill up your quota very quickly. Really, the images are stored in the cloud. You're not, um, they're not necessarily stored locally. Um, and you'll, when I say necessarily, you'll see as we get on with the series what I mean by that. But you're going to fill up that cloud storage rather quickly if you're a professional. If you're the occasional photographer, the even the advanced amateur, and you don't have a, um, a huge Lightroom library, Lightroom CC would be for you. If you're a travel photographer, I th think Lightroom CC might work better for you. Uh, it's accessible on mobile devices. And uh, really that's kind of the main i think attribute to it you would be able to um, import images into lightroom cc and then access them on your phone or your tablet and process them uh, there are some limitations to the processing which we'll talk about throughout the uh, video series at least limitations as far as when you're comparing it to lightroom classic cc so there are that there's that distinct difference in that Lightroom CC stores your images in the cloud. You don't have to have them anywhere locally on your computer. It's accessible from all your devices. Um, Lightroom Classic CC, the images are stored locally. And unless you use like um, smart, um, smart previews and things like that, you won't necessarily 
uh, be able to access uh, the images on across all your devices. Now, with that said, there's other uh, differences, at least to the functionality of the software. Uh, this is the interface uh, you see here. Although it's cosmetically similar, it's operationally uh, quite different. You'll notice that there's really no modules going across the top um, because there are no book, uh, map, slideshow, print, and web modules in Lightroom CC. And there really isn't a library module per se. Uh, what Lightroom CC has instead, because your images are stored in the cloud, over here on the left-hand panel, uh, you'll have all kind of library functions and it's very limited compared to Lightroom Classic CC. Over here on the right you have all the develop functions and that's somewhat limited compared to Lightroom Classic CC. Um, they're adding more and more to this develop side, this right hand side, uh, with every iteration of Lightroom CC. So they're more or less trying to make the develop options of Lightroom CC equal to Lightroom Classic CC, and I think eventually they will. Um, because be, uh, from the first iteration of this program, when it was released in October of 2017, for instance, there were uh, curves wasn't in here. Now there's a tone curve adjustment. So they, they've been adding to it, and they probably will add to it after I do this video, uh, which will make this video obsolete. Uh, on the left-hand panel, some more differences is we open up right here where they have a little like bookshelf. This is where you access your folders. This, again, is kind of like the library module. But unlike the library module, where the library module will mirror your actual file structure that is on your hard drive, it doesn't work that way here. Really, when you import images into Lightroom CC, they get uploaded to the cloud and they just kind of get thrown all together in um, you know, uh, an area, a folder, if you want to call it. And what you could do, though, you could sort them with um, albums. And the equivalent in Lightroom Classic CC to albums is collections. So if you're familiar with how to use collections in Lightroom Classic CC, albums are this, pretty much the same thing. And in Lightroom Classic CC, you could put multiple collections inside of a collection set. Well, in Lightroom CC, you put multiple albums inside of a folder. So that's really just kind of, uh, you know, uh, words. It's just the way you're storing and sorting your images. And you could see here, there I have albums, and I have a folder called All Photos. This is I created. And then below that, I have two albums. I have a Buffalo Zoo album, and then I have the Thin Man Sculpture uh, album, which I only have three images in it. It's just a sculpture that is on Buffalo's waterfront, and I have three images there. So that is kind of really the library section of Lightroom CC. Uh, then once you have your images imported, and perhaps you sorted them into albums and you further sorted those albums into folders and you're happy with all that there is some limited um, functionality where you could call uh, you could do uh, picks you could pick an image like you would do or flag an image like you would do in Lightroom Classic CC the keyboard shortcuts are slightly different on some of these things in Lightroom Classic CC to pick an image to flag it you would hit the P key uh, the P key in uh, Lightroom CC opens and close, closes the My Photo section or this library section. Uh, to pick a photo, if I want to pick this, I would hit the Z key. Z is in zebra, and that will pick it. To unpick it, you would still hit the U key. And to uh, discard it, or, or at least designate it as a discarded image, you would hit the X key. So the X and U keys are the same. The pick key is different. We'll get, I'm getting a little too um, refined for this video. We're going to cover this in another video. But needless to say, what I want to get across is some of the keyboard shortcuts are different, and I will go over that as we go through the series. 
with the limited functionality of this so-called, and I'm calling it the library part of the program. That's not what Adobe calls it, but I'm going to call it that. Um, you could either pick an image, you could exclude an image, or you could give it a star rating. And we'll cover that in future episodes. Um, then on the right-hand panel I mentioned is where you could actually process the image. And this first uh, little icon here, when you click that, you'll see that this is pretty much the different sections that are in the Develop module of Lightroom Classic CC. Some different wording, though. Uh, first of all, we do have profiles. Any profiles and or presets that you have in Lightroom Classic CC will migrate uh, automatically into Lightroom CC. And you can see here I have all my, um, my profiles that I sell, um, my Patreon reward profiles. They all migrated over here automatically. And also any presets you have in Lightroom Classic CC migrate over automatically into uh, Lightroom CC. So the profile section is pretty much the same. And then uh, below that we have this section called Light. This is part of the basic panel in Lightroom Classic CC, we have, of course, exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, and blacks. Also, you'll notice there's this little uh, icon right here. If you click on that, you'll get the tone curve. Uh, you have the two curves. You have the point curve, and you have just kind of this um, other tone curve that is um, available. Um, uh, names escaping me I'm drawing a blank if I hover though it says it's there it is the parametric curve so there's the parametric curve and the regular tone curve and you can see that they're both available you just have to click that to unhide it uh, below light we have color and we have temperature tint vibrance and saturation also we have this little icon here and if we hit that we have the color mixer this is more or less the HSL panel that's in Lightroom Classic CC. And again, some of these are hidden. You have to hit those icons to reveal them. In the effects section, we have clarity, dehaze, vignette, and grain. And you can see we have something hidden right there. And we'll click on that. And that's split toning. So split toning is hidden in the effects section. In detail, rather limited. We have just sharpening, noise reduction, one slider for each. And then we have color noise reduction. So there aren't all those other uh, sliders that are in Lightroom Classic CC that help you better fine tune the sharpening and noise reduction to your image. Most notably masking uh, isn't uh, no slider for that. So hopefully this will be one section that they add to and improve in future uh, releases of this software. Below that we have optics and you can see we have um, just chromatic aberration and lens profiles. There's also a little expose triangle here. If we roll that down, you could see that it's showing the lens used, and then you could do some manual adjustments if you wish uh, with those two sliders. Below optics, we have geometry, and you could see that um, it says upright off. But if I click on this right here, um, well, before I do that, I should click there. You could see we have the guided auto level vertical and uh, full and you can see that guided there that is what this little tool does but if i click there we get all the adjustments that are in the lightroom classic cc section of that tab and also if you click um, i'm sorry if you click right here you'll get the tools to do a guided adjustment we covered that in those other videos and i'll be covered that in in, um, and when I say that, other, the other videos, I mean the Lightroom Classic CC videos. And I will cover that in the Lightroom CC video series as well. So that's geometry. Below that, we have some local adjustments and cropping. So this is the crop tool uh, right there. Below that, we have the healing brush tool. And you have both the heal and the clone brush options for that uh, brush. Uh, below that, we have the actual just brush. And it's pretty much uh, rather fully featured. It doesn't have the presets that the Lightroom Classic CC version has. Um, below that, we have the linear gradient. So you could you know, draw a gradient on the image. We have the radial gradient below that. And then below that, we have these three dots. And if you click on that, you could see you do uh, have the capability to copy the settings you did to one image onto another image. 
and you could control what gets copied as well. So you don't have to copy all the settings. You could copy some of them. And there's some other functionality there, including whether or not you want the histogram to show. So this is kind of the develop section. Uh, there's some other, you know, functionality going out throughout the image uh, or throughout the work space uh, that is kind of minor. And we're going to be covering that in future episodes. So again, in this episode, I just kind of wanted to show you Lightroom CC and explain how it is probably different than Lightroom Classic CC for those of you that are familiar with Lightroom Classic CC and give you an idea of what you can and can't do with it. Now, in our next episode, I'm going to show you how to get images into Lightroom CC. Once you get them in, they'll automatically go up to the cloud. And once they're up at the cloud, you could ex access them from any of your devices. And um, then in subsequent uh, episodes, we'll learn how to create those um, albums and folders, um, how to pick images, how to star rate images, um, different uh, things we could do for our workspace to make it more custom to us. And then we'll finally get into the fun stuff, actually processing uh, our images with Lightroom CC. Thank you everyone for watching my video series, Learn Lightroom CC. If you could do me a favor and like and share the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate that as well. Also, in the description below this video will be a link to my website. Come visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find all kinds of free photography how-to articles and videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.